Hello to whoever's watching. This is a custom tailored guitar lesson for my big brother and friend, the amazing Seth Brightman. But I figured since it's going to be on YouTube, so anyone who comes across this might find it useful. So basically, I, as a request of my friend, I'm going to try and give a few tips for the singer songwriter slash guitar player who wants to get his guitar playing chops a bit better so he'll free his mind for more of being in the moment and singing and getting your crowd excited and just being feeling free and more proficient on the guitar and making your playing more interesting so um, first thing before we practice is stretches now it might not sound that has anything to do with the guitar but it's very important and it goes from top to bottom, not only your fingers, like do your neck all around, then shoulders, hand turns, side to sides, bend down, knees, back, everything, like get your whole body, just feel that all your muscles are relaxed, and then most important are your hands, just do this to get your fingers going, then the wrists going, a bit of these, then you have this like back bend, and then do it forward and then the opposite way do that in both hands just to get everything really good and stretched out before you even start playing then I would break my practicing into like three sections well first of all just make sure it's uh, like if you really want to see an improvement I'd make like find the time of day that the more you get it into framework, the better. If you know that, I don't know what your schedule is exactly, but let's say from like 8 to 9 p.m., that's your guitar time. It's the best if you like have it in your daily schedule, just like brushing your teeth or whatever, that it's a routine. You'll see the, the best improvements. Um, and then try and see how much time you have. Recommended is to try and find an hour. If you don't have that, find a half hour, but define a time that you know you're going to play. You don't just shoot up for the, like, say, I'm going to practice two hours a day, and then because it's so much, you won't get any of it done. Even if it's a half an hour, just define that moment that you know you're practicing. Now, the you should break it up into three parts. I'd say the first part will be like a fifth of your time, then... Uh, let's say you got 50 minutes to practice, so 10 minutes you do scales, then 20 minutes you learn new songs, then the last 20 minutes you just basically practice songs as you know them, as if you're playing a show right now. So scales, you just want to have just robotic, mechanical chops going, just like the Karate Kid with the wax on, wax off thing. Uh, it'll get you, it'll help you know your guitar neck better, and you'll just, you won't have to look at your guitar as much. You'll just feel that, that you know what's going on. Um, what I do, first of all, I'll put, like, links below in the YouTube of everything you need, like, uh, charts to look at. So you obviously need to know your five pentatonic positions. That won't get your chops going so well, but you have to know it as a guitar player, even if you're going to solo just a bit or a whole lot, it's good to know. Practice them up and down, so I'll put a link, I'll look for a chart and put a link for it. Then a very important exercise is, is do major scales and minor scales. Every major scale has seven main positions on the neck. but uh, you do the first six, the last one isn't that important for you. Same with the minor scale. Uh, just for an example, like the major scale, if we take C, so you have this, it starts with your middle finger on the sixth string. And then you have that it starts from the pinky or from the first finger. Then you have the same thing on... That starts from string number five, the middle finger, first finger, and pinky. And I'll put charts for that too. But here's the trick I'd find the metronome and just 
find that you can download an app for it find a click that you're convenient with that isn't too fast and pick with the pick you start with your downstroke and do alternating picks make sure they're alternating look I'll exaggerate it with my hand up down up down up down up and don't confuse them don't do like that getting that routine going will get you consistent then do the same thing instead of starting down start up it's very confusing and it'll like free up all kinds of borders you have in your brain all kinds of limitations if you once you start down and the next time you start up now what I do is let's say you start with a certain BPM once you get it three times in a row up the scale and down the scale without making mistakes you can take your click up and go faster every time so if it's like three times you do So once you get that three times in a row without mistaking your pick, without any glitches, you can raise, keep the click going up. And make sure, don't aim for fast, aim for beautiful, aim for nice, with no mistakes and no buzzes, and do it with grace. That should be your, your goal, not the speed. And then you do that, that was the first position, you do it in a different position. Anyway, I'll put the link for that. Now, every day when you practice, if I did it in C, next time do it in A, do it in G, just go and know your whole scale. Every day take a different key. Uh, then after you do scales, this is the first, still the first like 10 minutes of chops, you do chords. So if I have a C chord, so you alternate the picking on it. You go up. And then you go up, down. Notice how the pick too. I'm going down, up, down, up, down, up. And then you change chords. Once you finish that, you do it with your fingers. Okay, so. Then you just keep building on technique exercises like that. You can find a ton on YouTube. If not, even if you want me to elaborate on anything I'm talking about here, so let me know and I'll like make another video about that. So, yeah, do the chords, do the scales. If you get bored of the scales, you, there's all kinds of different exercises. You can go up like by thirds. Things like that, just to get just robotic exercises going. The next part is uh, learning. Oh, and another thing, I also, I know you have two guitars. You have the Martin and the Guild, if I'm not mistaken, that the Guild is huge and the Martin is tiny. So switch between the guitars. It's also important, like, to get um, different feels going. It'll also, like, relax you and get you better. So the second part, song, just learn, like, find songs that are cool on guitar to play that sound good to you like or specific guitar players that um that you have something to learn for and just make a bank of songs you want to learn i also recommend a few i'll make a list and what you want to do is first of all try by yourself to learn that song um even if you're getting it wrong, it doesn't matter because the effort that you're putting in trying to figure it out, that's what is actually making you better, the exertion. And um, even if you get it wrong, it might give you ideas for new stuff of your own. So try as hard as you can to learn it and then go to YouTube. Every song today, there's a million guys giving guitar lessons on it. So then find the, somebody teaching that specific song you were trying to learn. 
and learn it the correct way and try and compare what you did and then learn it as good as you can and like uh, I don't know I could have lied by the chili pe the chili pepper so it's So that's basically Frusciante's way of playing B minor. A, G. So he found this cool picking pattern. So learn that pattern and then learn how to sing that song on the pattern. It'll get you good and going. So that's the second part of, the, of your practice is to find cool songs and learn how to play them. Um, you can, I'm sure on Google you just type best acoustic guitar parts or pickings or whatever I'll, I'll try and f make a list of what I recommend and the last part of your practicing you play a gig it doesn't matter if it's in your living room or whatever but for the last like 20 minutes or the last third of your practicing time take a bunch of songs you've accumulated that you learned it can be like famous covers or it can be songs of your own that you want to get better at and and just sit down and play them. Um, if it's your own songs, so try and put cool things into, into your chords of everything you've learned of the cover songs you've learned just to make your songs more interesting. Now when you play, try it in different situations like do it standing up, then do it sitting down. Do it with your eyes closed, with your eyes open. Another thing, even though it might sound narcissistic and egoistic, is play in front of a mirror. Uh, the good thing about it, it keeps your eyes ahead instead of looking at your neck all the time. And uh, you can also check your posture if you're sitting nice or bent down. Or So it's a good thing to practice in front of a mirror. And I think that's about it. And... Yeah, practice makes you better if you have any questions on any of these things. So call me, let me know, and I can make specific clips for everything you didn't understand. Good luck. I love you.